Hey everybody and welcome to the far side of 40. Today I'm going to be talking about the L'Oreal Infallible up to 24 hour fresh wear foundation. Yes, that is the full name of the foundation. Really long name. Way to go L'Oreal. Um, what I'm going to do is tell you first about the claims of the foundation and then I'll go into a demo where I'll apply the foundation and then do a couple of check-ins throughout the day and I'll give you my final thoughts on it at the end of the video. And I do have notes off to the sides just to remind myself because I'm 48 years old and I can't remember everything so I need notes these days. So anyway, it claims to be a long wear foundation up to 24 hours. It claims to be lightweight. It has breathable skin technology. It has three oil absorbers to resist sweat, water, and transfer. It's supposed to give a fresh, healthy looking complexion. It's non-comedogenic. It has broad spectrum SPF 25 protection, which means it's going to block against both UVA and UVB rays. It comes in 30 shades and it says you can apply it with your fingers, with a brush, or with a sponge. My preferred method is with a sponge. I'm not very good with a brush. Um, it seems like any foundation that I apply with a brush just tends to pick up flakes of skin on my dry skin. It just doesn't lay down smoothly, so I've kind of given up on brushes. I'm a sponge person now at this point in my life. Uh, the foundation retails for $14.99, and it comes in 30 shades. The shade I picked up is number 405 Porcelain. Uh, the first shade in the range is number 400, and then the next one is 405, so technically this is the second lightest shade in their range. The shade range is decent. Um, it's definitely skewed more toward light and medium skin tones. Um, there are shades for deeper skin tones, but they tend, they look like they have very strong undertones of, you know, yellows and oranges, so that might uh, not be the best range for people with deeper skin. So anyway, that's what the foundation claims to do. And now we'll get into the application and the wear test. Okay, now we're going to apply the foundation and hopefully I'm zoomed in close enough so you can see how well it goes on. But first let me go in with my primer. And I use the Ordinary High Adherence Silicone Primer. This is kind of my go-to. It works really well with uh, most foundations. The only time I don't use this as if my skin is feeling particularly dry that day and I feel like I need a little extra moisture, then I go for uh, a different one and that's usually the NYX Hydra Touch foundation, which gives me a lot of moisture and it feels really good. It has kind of a cooling effect on the skin too, which is nice. Um, but anyway, so there's my primer. And something I do, I don't know if a lot of people do this, but you can give it a try if you feel daring. I actually put my found my primer, excuse me, under my eyes. Um, the reason for that is I have a lot of texture and wrinkles under here and I just feel like it helps to smooth things out a little bit. Now it doesn't work very well with all concealers so try that at your own risk um, if you want to try it but you know it uh, helps me a little bit. Now to give this foundation the best chance possible, I'm also going to go in with my L'Oreal Magic Perfecting Base. Uh, this is a thicker primer, as you can see here. It's kind of a paste, and um, I just put a little bit of that and spread it on my fingers, and then I pat it in where I have pores that show the most, and that's where I have a problem with this foundation, as you'll see. But I'm gonna give it the best chance possible. This does help a little bit. All right, so here we go with the foundation. And one of the reasons I don't think it works very well, oh, you do have to shake it up, by the way, um, is because it's so liquidy. And I'll show you that. I'll pump some out on my little palette here. All right, so there it is sitting on the palette. And then if I do that, look how it's just runny. So I think that might be one reason that this foundation doesn't work really well on me and might not work really well on anyone with some texture to their skin. All right, dab, dab, dab. And I'm using my AOA um, 
what do they call this? Magic sponge or something like that. This is the one that's $1.55. And honestly, it's just as good, if not better, than a beauty blender, which costs 20 bucks. You get these online at uh, shopmissa.com. And like I said, they're $1.55. Even with shipping, like shipping is at like $3.95, I think, on their site. And um, yeah, this <laughs> blender comes out way cheaper than a beauty blender. And I like it really, really well. Okay, so... As you can see, coverage, I wouldn't call this 100% coverage. It, I definitely still have color peeking through, freckles peeking through. Maybe on somebody who didn't have as much you know, pigment on their skin as I do. Um, it might work better, but for me, I'm not getting 100% coverage on that. side dab dab do you guys make weird faces when you're putting on your foundation <laughs> I know I do I'm trying not to while I'm filming but yeah I'll notice I'll look at myself in the mirror and I'm going eh, or some crazy face like that just to get it where I want it <laughs> But if you can see right here, look at that. It just doesn't want to apply in between my eyes. It's very strange. I'm going to keep dabbing. See if that helps. But honestly, sometimes I just take my fingers and wipe it down, which is I think what I'm going to do. Yeah, look at that. That's just... It's not even, it's not that it's breaking up, it's just like not applying. It's so strange. And I don't have that problem with my favorite foundation, which is Lancome Tête Idole. I know that's expensive, but you know, sometimes you do get what you pay for. And I think that's one of those cases. Yeah, look, it's just, mm, I don't know. Now the other thing that I dislike about it, I don't know if you can see this, is I give it the, I get what I call polka dot pores. It just kind of settles into my pores and I get these dots and it's not cute. I mean, polka dots are cute, but not on your face. You know what I mean? I don't know. Can you see that? See how I'm getting little dots there? I'm blending and I'm blending and I'm blending and and that's even with pore filler. If I didn't have that pore filler in there, ugh, it would be much, 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 much worse. Yeah, I don't know what to do about this. I mean, this obviously I do have wrinkles here. You can see it's also settling right into my wrinkles. I mean, you know, when you get when you start getting wrinkles, that's where they're going to go. Um, but the texture is just bizarre. It uh, doesn't look good, y'all. It doesn't look good. And I'm going out to lunch. And I have rehearsal tonight. Um, I sing with a chamber choir. And we are having a concert on Sunday. So normally our rehearsals are on Tuesday nights, but it's concert week. So we throw extra rehearsals in just to get extra ready. <clears throat> so this has got to last me for quite a while. And I don't think it's going to. I don't know. I just can't make this foundation work. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. I've tried applying it with my fingers too. Because that's one of the methods that they suggest on the bottle. But yeah. It's it's just not, not the cutest thing ever, is it? Um, let's see. I'm not going to put it under my eyes. Normally, I put, <clears throat> with my Tenti Doll, I do put it under my eyes and I go over that with concealer. But I'm not going to even attempt that because um, I just think that's going to be a disaster. So I'm using now my Tarte uh, Maracuja Creaseless Concealer. Apparently, this concealer has been around for a little while and then they've repackaged it. It was in kind of a squeezy tube. But now it's in with this uh, 
paddle applicator. I think that's better. <laughs> care for about this concealer is that it is definitely has a shiny finish you can say do dewy all you want but it's shiny I <laughs> dewy please I know that's all the rage right now dewy skin shiny people it's not dewy it's shiny all right so that helped a little bit at least under the eyes <clears throat> boy I'm dry today though not a need a little bit extra. All right, I'm going to go in with my setting powder just because it's not, I'm afraid to put blush on top of that because it's a little bit sticky. <clears throat> I don't, <clears throat> excuse me, I don't think I'm going to get a very even application if I do that. So using my e.l.f. powder brush. Oh, and my powder is also from AOA. This is the AOA Studio Perfect Setting Powder. It's really good, and it's a dollar. <laughs> I mean, it's a small container, sure, sure but a dollar for that is not bad, and it's a good setting, good setting powder. Um, definitely helps keep the shine down. <laughs> Notice I said shine, not dewy. <laughs> All right, I need a different brush for under my eyes here because I don't want to apply too much. The trick with setting under your eyes is to use as little powder as possible because you don't want it getting cakey. I'm gonna go back over my edges of my eyeshadow once I'm done. I always do that. I apply my eyeshadow and um, once I'm done with my foundation, I'll go back over the edges and add a little more, buff it around a little bit. I find that works better than trying to dodge my eyeshadow while I'm applying foundation. All right, let's do a little bronzer, and I use the Physician's Formula Butter Bronzer in light. And I'm gonna use my Flower Beauty blush in Perfect Primrose. So now that I've got all my products on, you can see, other than I will put some mascara on my lower lashes in a minute here, but y'all don't need to see that. But can you just see all the texture that's peeking through on my skin now? That doesn't happen with my Lancome. That doesn't happen with a lot of foundations on me, honestly. Um, so I don't know. I think that it's a combination of dry skin, textured skin. You know, my skin is not baby smooth. Um pores and wrinkles that this foundation just doesn't react well to all that at all um, so you know you see these younger uh, beauty gurus <clears throat> raving about this foundation I'm sure it's fantastic on them I could see that but I don't think for anybody who has any texture or wrinkles on their skin that this is gonna be a good thing um, I am gonna try is and wear it as long as I can Ugh. And um, I'll do some check-ins later, but I mean, it's already starting out bad, so I can't imagine that it's going to get any better. Um, this might be pretty funny by the time I get home from rehearsal, but that's okay. I'll do it for you. I will get back with you later with some check-ins, and uh, that's how the foundation goes on on me. Okay, so I wanted to do a quick update. Um, this area was just driving me crazy, and I... I just couldn't go out of the house looking like that. So what I did was I actually removed the um, makeup from this area and I went back in with just my pore filling primer and I reapplied it a little bit. Well, a little bit. I reapplied it <laughs> between my eyes to see if I could get a better result. Um, I think it looks a little bit better. Um, the texture is not quite as bad as it was but it's definitely still there uh, fortunately I have bangs <laughs> so that's one good thing about bangs they can hide a lot of sins uh, but anyway uh, just did that and also finished up my makeup um, put on some lipstick and 
under eye uh, color, and of course my lower lash, uh, my lower lashes. So that helps a lot to to finish off my look. But anyway, I think I feel a little bit better about going out in this now with that situation resolved somewhat. But we'll see how it goes at the end of the day. And I don't think I'm going to be real happy with it. But oh well, I'm doing it for you just so you can see that uh, this is not the best foundation ever for those of us over 40. All right, see you later. Hi everybody, um, it's about 2.30, which means I've had the foundation on for about four hours, and I thought I would give you a little update on how it's doing. By the way, let me show you something here, hold on. Oh, how do I do this? All right, I'm just gonna have to flip the camera around. Can you see the temperature? Yeah, it's today is February the 8th, and it is 77 degrees. It is gorgeous. Uh, so my mom and I had lunch, and we went and walked around uh, outside at one of our, uh, we have an outlet mall up here that's mostly outdoors, so we did some walking around, and that was kind of fun. Uh, but anyway, uh, so the foundation's been exposed, I guess, to the elements a little bit, and I don't think it's really changed any. It hasn't deteriorated. Let um, me pull in a little bit. I mean, the texture's still there. It hasn't gotten any better, but it hasn't gotten any worse either. And um, pull on to this side. Ooh, that lighting is changing. There we go. Um, you know, it's still about the way it was. As you can see, definitely out here, you can see that it's not full coverage. Um, and then this area up here is, you know, about the same. It's actually, my lines are looking a lot more accentuated, but that may be because I'm squinting. I don't know. Um, I had my sunglasses on, but still, um, it's bright out here. But, I mean, it's holding up. It hasn't changed. Uh, it's just, like I said, not the most fabulous foundation in the world, but at least it's not breaking down on me, so that's a good thing. Um, so anyway, I just wanted to do a quick check-in, and I will do one later this evening after my rehearsal. My rehearsal starts at 7 and gets out at 9.30, so it'll be a pretty good wear test um, to see how the foundation held up. So I will do another check-in then. See you later. Bye. Hey everybody, so it's about 9.30 at night. I uh, just got back from rehearsal and I just wanted to do a quick check-in on the foundation and show you what's happened to it throughout the day. Um, it's not anything that I didn't expect, honestly. So the first thing that I've noticed is right in here, uh, some real dry patches, and that's unusual. I usually don't get dry patches down here, but it's uh, like clinging to, uh, well, it's just creating dry patches here, honestly, because that's not where I'm dry. Um, it's kind of breaking up around the nose. Sorry, I don't know why my light's doing that. It's breaking up around my nose a good bit. It's pretty much gone from this area here where I had such a uh, problem with it. But I also wore glasses today and sunglasses, so that's probably part of the culprit. Another reason bangs are great, because they hide all that kind of stuff. Um, texture all over the cheeks, you know, is just showing up like crazy. Um, dryness here, you know, so, yeah, you know, it's just not the best foundation ever. Um, now who would this work for? So I think that this would be a good foundation for someone who doesn't have any wrinkles on their skin, someone whose skin is still nice and smooth, um, doesn't have a lot of blemishes or texture on their skin. It would probably work really well because in areas where I don't have any texture and stuff, it's fine. Oh, the pores. Yeah, I forgot to say the pores. They're all polka dotted. I mean, I'm not sure the camera's picking that up, but yeah, it's kind of pretty funny actually. It's just like little dots everywhere. Um, so again, if you don't have any pores, this would you know be really good for you. Okay, wait a minute. We all have pores. Sorry about that. If you don't have large pores, um, this might work pretty well for you. But um, it's just not something I can recommend. Now, as far as you know, for dry skin or oily skin, um, I think. It's probably better for dry skin because it does, my skin still does feel pretty soft and hydrated and everything. So um, on somebody who's, somebody who's oily, you might get a little more shine than you want. But who knows? Um, I think several other beauty gurus who do have oily skin have talked about it. I don't remember what they said, but I can't speak to that because my skin's dry. But anyway, um, not something I'd recommend, unfortunately. But there's other stuff out there. There's all kinds of foundations out there. I promise you there's something out there for you. Anyway, I um, hope that you have had a great day. And um, I thank you so much for watching this video. And I hope to see you in my next one. Thanks again for watching. Bye-bye.